What if you had to write something but you were not allowed to use a certain letter? That would be quite a challenge, right? Well, some writers have challenged themselves to write entire books which completely leave out a particular letter. Writing like this prose or poetry which deliberately leaves out one or more letters is called a lipogram. Of course, it doesn't have to be as long as an entire book. It could be a short poem, a paragraph or a sentence. If you want to discover some great examples of lipograms, keep watching. But first, do subscribe to The English Nut. Thanks. I was recently reading a book called Alphabetica. In it, I came across a reference to another book called Gadsby, a 50,000 word novel that does not use the letter E even once. This is no mean feat because E is the most frequently used letter in the English language. This led me to an exploration of lipograms. Writing that deliberately leaves out a particular letter is called a lipogram. The word comes from Greek. Its first part, lipo, means leaving out and its second part, gram, is from grammar, meaning letter. Writer Catherine Giordano tried to rewrite a couple of lines from Shakespeare as lipograms omitting the letter E. As she discovered, it's a tricky thing to do. The first line was from Romeo and Juliet. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. This sentence contains six E's. To convey its meaning without the vowel E, she came up with this rhyme. A crimson bloom of an unknown brand is just as fragrant to an olfactory gland. Considerably longer than the original line, but does the job. Olfactory means relating to the sense of smell. Olfactory glands are located in the nose, of course. The other line she tried her hand at is the famous one from Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. In her effort to rid this line of its four E's, this is what she wrote. To stay in this mortal world or by my own hand go to oblivion. That is my conundrum. Not bad. It sounds Shakespearean and sort of rhymes. Oblivion here means death. Conundrum means a difficult problem. Now here is a quote from Gatsby, the 50,000 word lipogram I mentioned earlier, which avoids the letter E, in which author Vincent Wright describes the challenge of writing a lipogram. Now any author from history's dawn always had that most important aid to writing an ability to call upon any word in his dictionary in building up his story. That is, our strict laws as to word construction did not block his path. But in my story, that mighty obstruction will constantly stand in my path. For many an important common word I cannot adopt, owing to its orthography. Note that the letter E does not occur even once in the quote. Orthography means spelling. So far, we've seen lipograms that omit E. Let's look at lipograms that avoid other letters. Here are some lines from a lipogram without the letter I that Brian Herrick composed as an answer to a quiz question as a contestant on a program called Ask Me Another on National Public Radio in the US. To compose a ballad bereft the letter I can be cumbersome, arduous. Why even try? What would the stakes need be? Stardom, wealth, or glory? Or just an endeavor that makes a good story? Perhaps just a task for a wry educator? Or maybe the decree of a vowel hater? Next, we have something called a pangrammatic lipogram. A pangram is a phrase which contains all the letters of the alphabet. A pangrammatic lipogram contains all the letters of the alphabet except one. The most famous pangram, the one traditionally used to practice typing, goes, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now let's alter this sentence slightly by changing jumps to its past tense. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a pangrammatic lipogram that contains all the letters but S. Eunoia is the name of the best-selling Canadian poetry book of all time. In each of the five chapters of this lipogrammatic book, poet Christian Book has restricted himself to the use of one vowel only, making it a univocalic lipogram. The first chapter, for example, contains only the vowel A and avoids the other four vowels. Book does not number his chapters 1 to 5. Instead, he names them chapter A, chapter E, chapter I, chapter O, and chapter U. 
Interestingly, each chapter is dedicated to a creative artist whose name is also a univocalic lipogram. Chapter O, for example, is dedicated to Japanese multimedia artist Yoko Ono. Let me quote a line or two from each chapter to give you a flavor of these wonderful lipograms. Chapter A. Hassan can, at a hand clap, call a vassal at hand and ask that all staff plan a bacchanal. Chapter E. He rebels. He sets new precedents. He lets cleverness exceed decent levels. Chapter I. Writing is inhibiting. Sighing, I sit scribbling in ink. This pigeon script. Chapter O. Books form cocoons of comfort, tombs to hold bookworms. Chapter U. Ubu, cult guru, must bluff dumbstruck numbskulls, such jumps. The title of the book, Eunoia, is a word of Greek origin that means beautiful thinking. Eunoia is the shortest word that contains all five vowels. Finally, let's come back to the book that set me off on the trail of lipograms, Alphabetica by Roy Phoenix. This is an allegorical tale of the letters of the alphabet that live on planet typewriter. It describes the animosity that develops between the consonant majority and the vowel minority. In that context, when a song is written with the letter U excluded, it seems like bad news for the vowels. In fact, this particular song avoids not just U, but Q as well. Even though Q is a consonant, because it is handicapped by its dependence on U, its status is deemed lower than that of the other consonants. Here are the opening and closing verses of the song. Its sweetness belies the turmoil in the world of letters. Sweet homes of the letters are hidden in my typewriter, where words bloom like flowers with bird songs too, painted crimson, green, and indigo, and dazzling bright yellow, spherical, rectangle, and ziggy zaggy few. They have their differences, yet their homes have no fences. They may agree to disagree, yet they know not what to do. As you can see, no Q and no U in sight. Do you want to try your hand at writing a lipogram? If you do, please share it in the comments section. Please subscribe to The English Nut on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter. On YouTube, click on the bell icon too, so you're notified whenever I publish a new video. I'm The English Nut. Bye for now.